Good morning, modern steaders. It's windy out this morning. It's kind of taking my breath. We woke up, came outside, and I didn't think we were getting any snow last night, but we were wrong, huh? Yeah. We got a good amount, a couple inches. I guess I might be having to put that on today. Okay, love you. Have a good day at school. Hi, Levies. I went to bed last night. It was in the upper 20s. And then we woke up this morning and it's 14 degrees out with a bunch of snow. We weren't, ex I wasn't expecting this. What do you guys say? As of right now, I have no idea of the direction of this video. You might know by the title of it, but I don't know yet. If Willow is in heat, we gotta bring it to the breeder to go have a date with the buck again. Sorry, the wind is blowing, it's taking my breath away. If not, I got a couple of other things we need to do today. Here's the ham, egg, cheese, and broccoli bake we made. Just had to wash down that breakfast bake. I'll tell you what, that's delicious. If you guys are looking for a new breakfast to try, oh, the hash browns in there, the eggs, the bacon, the cheese, the broccoli. Not bacon, ham. Canadian bacon, there we go. Oh, that was good, you guys should try making that dish. Now it's time to go milk Willow and we'll see if she's in heat or not. I hope she's not in heat, I hope she's pregnant. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Curious to see what kind of mood Willow's in this morning. So, Willow. You in heat? Let's get the buck bomb out and check. What? I make you wait for your food. It's terrible, isn't it? Oh, you gotta patiently wait. You in a bad mood again today? Huh? You moody? Seem it. Okay, get up there. Go. Curious to see. Curious to see how much. Yeah, her udder's pretty low. She might be in heat. Not much milk in her udder this morning. We might be going for a ride. I'll milk her. Then I'll get the buck bomb out. Yep. Not much milk today. Leads me to believe she's probably in heat. Not much milk at all. Let's see what she does today. She still wants nothing to do with the scent of the buck. 
Last time when we brought it to the breeder, I put the buck bomb out and it excited her and she couldn't get enough of sniffing it. She doesn't want nothing to do with it, but there's a couple of signs of her being in heat that she has right now. I don't know. Like, Buttercup wants to smell it and lick it, lick it. Willow don't even care about it. All right, come on. I don't know how all the goat people do it without a buck. Man, it's hard trying to figure out when your goat's in heat. We're gonna have to get a buck hopefully next year. I think we better clean the truck off. We either gotta do some plowing, or we're gonna have to bring Willow to the breeder and keep checking on her and see if I think she's in heat or not. Now I find myself going, should I brought her to the breeder yesterday? Was she in heat yesterday? Oh. I would be more apt to bring her more if it was closer. It's about an hour and 15, hour and a half away from here. So we're looking at three hours just driving, four hours, three and a half, four hours once we get there and do everything. So it's not just a quick little trip. If we had our own buck, we could just put her in with the buck when we thought she was in heat, and then we'd know the reason, the reason why we want to breed our goats is because we want the babies so they'll produce milk, and then we're either gonna keep maybe a baby or two, and then we'll sell the rest. Blossom and Buttercup are two smaller does. Next fall, when they're about a year, year and a half old, we'll breed them, and then they'll have babies, and then we'll be able to milk them too. We'd like to grow a bigger dairy milking herd. I wish it didn't have to be so hard trying to figure out when your goat's in heat. And who would have ever thought? Man, the things you get into when you start homesteading, it's crazy. I never thought I'd be running around trying to figure out if my goat was in heat. But it's worth it. I love this lifestyle. Huh? You in heat? We gotta bring you to the breeder? Huh? I say yes and then I say no. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? You in heat? You're like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. He's got the buck bomb. Does that smell good? Waiting to see the tail wagon. I think that means yes. I think we're gonna take a ride over to the breeder. Her tail's wagging, she's flagging, she's talkative. So, if I'm gonna do it, I gotta do it now. I got a chiropractor appointment. And about as just as much time away as it's gonna take me to get there, get her on her date, and drive back. So we gotta be fast. <laughs> Before we leave, I wanna get some stew meat out. So it'll be defrosted, we can cook dinner later. I'm gonna go get Willow and I'll be right back. I'm trying to do this quick. Almost forgot the hay. Willow's <laughs> like, I know what we're doing this time.
so she can breathe through the sides on both sides. She's got plenty of airflow. She's gonna stay nice and warm. She's in there tight. After driving for a little bit, I like to pull over and go out and check on the animal you're transporting. Make sure everything's good, they're not getting a wind chill, they didn't get hurt, they're not upset, they're not stressed out. There's a few things that could be going on. Hey Willow. You nice and warm? All right, everything is good. Get back on the road, head over to the barn where we need to bring her on her date. You know how some days it feels like everything is either working against you or I don't need one more thing on the plate. I got enough going on. That's when you know you're going in the right direction. When everything is fighting against you. When you seem like you gotta push so hard, something or somebody wants you to give up. That's not the time to give up. That's the time to push harder. I know, just bringing the goat to the breeder isn't that big of a deal. But it wasn't in my plan for the day. I didn't have time for it. But we're gonna make it work, we're gonna push through, we're gonna get Willow pregnant, and we're gonna have baby goats and more goat's milk next year. It's gonna be a good day, guys. It's gonna be a good day. Stay positive, stay focused on your dreams, your goals. Just because you get knocked down every once in a while doesn't mean you're on the wrong path. Most of the time it means you're on the right path. And something don't want you getting there. Keep pushing forward, guys. Let's go forward. Oh, this is something you don't see every day. An excavator driving down the highway. <laughs> Top ends, better put it in four wheel drive. Almost there. We made it. Remember where to go? Oh, I see the buck. Your tail's a wagon. Someone's excited. Yep, cool beans. She's all happy. That buck is Buttercup and Blossom's father. <laughs> now Willow don't want to leave. <laughs> Come on Willow, you're eating hay, I guess you're all done. Silly goat. Willow don't want to leave now. Come on. Oh, you found a leaf. Let's go. Say goodbye to your boyfriend. Come on. back to the homestead. All went well. She was definitely in heat today. 
I am glad we brought her. <sighs> so I have to write today's date down. Today is December 17th. We're about two days behind on uploading. So December 17th it is. I have to mark five months from there. Exciting times. I see blacktop. Guess we can take it out of four wheel drive now. Got some weird equipment out today. We made it back. Look at that wind blowing. Oh, uh, do you hear Willow? You girls gotta come out. You can come out, you know. You glad to be home? You seem to be happy you're home. Alright. What did you make in school today? Snowflake. You made that? Yeah. Cool beans. But it has glitter on it. It's got glitter on it. I lost like half the glitter on the books. Uh-oh. Did it take you a while to make that crazy thing? Um, kind of. Kind of? I brought Willow back to the breeder for another date today. Yep. Was she more interested? She was. You want me to hang it on this nail for you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, spin in the wrong way. There we go. How's that? Good. You like it? Yeah. Looks good. I can't tell it was good on. So if you're getting the sled, does that mean you're gonna pull me around? No. No. You don't want to go outside, Pluto, do you? Crazy puppy. Okay, you gonna pull me? No. I gotta pull you. Yeah. Oh man. Whoa, Dad. Look, look, look behind the trees. Look at the sunset. That is a cool sun in the back in the trees, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah, but can you turn me like that way so I don't run into the tree? If you run into a tree, duck and roll. You always go that way for some reason. What? You always go that direction, like it pulls you. She thinks she's a pig. What, do you want more hay? You need more hay? Yeah, that was from when I brought Willow back and unloaded her. Does Willow smell like a male goat? Kind of. A little bit. Willow? I don't want to. Willow? Go get it, Willow. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. What? You gotta go get it. Okay, I'll lock you in. <laughs> She's like, where the heck is the hay? Bye, Willow! Where the hay go? Where the hay go? Willow, where you go? To the hay feeder. <laughs> she didn't hear it. She wasn't going to go. Oh! Hold on. Come on, Pluto. We have good eggs. Pluto, come on. Come on. It is a pretty sunset. Uh, oh, man, oh. oh no! <laughs> you got a crazy sled ride. Yeah! How many eggs do you think we're gonna get? I don't know, probably five or six. Did you get any yeah. this morning? I didn't get any this morning. Five. Five? 
a cold <laughs> moose. This yeah. camera stand is cold. Cold eggs. Oh, we'll go with five carrots. Episode of cooking with Al. Oh, we're gonna make beef stew. I'm using grass fed, pasture raised stew meat from farmfoods.com. There's gonna be an affiliate link down below. If you use the link and promo code LA10, you save 10%, and Lumna Acres makes a small commission off of it, which helps support the channel. So if you guys use it, thank you. All the family farmers that raise meat for this website, I think there's five of them, thank you too. It's been a huge boost and their economy, their local food economy, which is awesome. We're gonna start off with our Instant Pot. I'm gonna put it on saute mode. I'm using avocado oil. You could use olive oil. While that's warming, now it's on. I'm gonna chop up one large onion. The trick we've been using for cutting up our onion, which has been working awesome, was left from one of the viewers. You cut one end off, take the skin off, leave the root on, cut down to the root, but don't go through. Why don't you do it one direction, do it the other direction. So it's supposed to help with the crying, and it does. And then also, when you go to cut it, your onion's already diced for you. What a crazy trick. I forget who left it in the comments below one in one video, but thank you guys, it works awesome. Grab one of the spatulas we made. I'm gonna mince up two to three cloves of garlic, depending on how big the cloves are. Yeah, these are good size, so. We go one, two. I'm going to add my stew meat in now. Get this browning up. Now we can mince up the garlic. Every time I've been cooking with garlic lately, all I can think about is the garlic we have planted in our raised bed gardens. I'm hoping that it's going good this winter and come next year we'll be harvesting our own garlic and cooking with it. That garlic smells delicious. I'm going to add in just a little bit more oil. <clears throat> While the meat's browning, I'm going to dice up our celery. And our lovely assistant's going to peel our carrots for us. I'll share a little hack with you. We like our stew pieces small, so they're kind of bigger chunks. I just cut them up after they're browned with my kitchen shears right in the pot. You don't gotta get a cutting board dirty or anything.
Seems like in our household, everybody's least favorite thing to peel is potatoes. I don't know why. What is it in your household that nobody likes to peel? I'm gonna put in three bay leaves. Full of pinches of black pepper. A lot of the times when I cook, I don't plan ahead. It's usually like, hey, what do I want for dinner? And then I see what we have to make it with. So if you have beef broth, use it. If not, we have chicken broth and it's not homemade. I know guys. Not sure how much we're gonna need. I'm going to use probably one and a half containers of chicken broth. One thing I like to keep on hand for times like this is we get better than bullion organic beef base. So I'm gonna put some, put some of that in here for flavoring since we're using chicken stock. I'm gonna use probably one and a half tablespoons. That's what's left in the jar. Manual. Oops. I'm gonna set it for 35 minutes. Once it's done cooking, stand back. I take five tablespoons of butter and melt it down. The lighting is terrible. That doesn't look like butter. Maybe this will help. Yep. All right, now that it's melted, shut it off and take it off the heat. Got to add in five tablespoons of flour. I'm told this is called making a roux. Now you can do this recipe in a crock pot on a stove top. I just like using the instant pot because I can do everything at the last minute. <laughs> Oh, it smells so good. I find what works best for me is taking out some broth, adding it into the roux, and thicken a little bit of it, like so. And I add in some more broth. And I just find I have a I just find doing this I have a better luck at thickening my stew with less flour. All right, now I got that made. And then of course you gotta test it. That's good. Mmm, delicious. If you want it thicker, you can make another batch of roux and add it in, stir it, thicken it up. One thing to remember is if you have leftovers and you stick it in the fridge, it's gonna get thicker as it sits in the refrigerator. Uh I do spoons for everybody.
Oh, you gotta be different. You have a four. Yeah, no, because I I can't. Let's just figure it outside. Yeah, it is. Is it on? Is it on? Yeah, it is. He does this though. You joining at school today? Mm -hmm. It's so really did. delicious. It's all you yeah. have. Mmm. Mm. That beef. Okay. It's amazing. It like melts in your mouth. So mm. tender. Mm. Mm. Does it just melt in your mouth? Stop. Well, it's good. You don't have to like bite it. Yeah, you don't even gotta bite it. It's just. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, we're really hoping that Willow is pregnant this time and we'll have baby goats running around the homestead the middle of May. What an exciting time. Oh, spring on the homestead is full of so much new life. It's awesome. We really hope you guys are having a great holiday season and it's not getting too hectic for you this time of the year with all that running around and getting all your last minute projects finished up. I know we've had quite a few things to do here. It's just crazy how busy the holiday season can get for all of us. Hope you guys can take some time, stop, and just remember what the holiday season's all about. Just appreciate it. We really appreciate all you guys coming along on our journey with us, sharing it with us, leaving comments, supporting us. We love you all. We hope you guys have a great weekend. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.